Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today, we are going to be analyzing the company, none other than Nike, a company that pretty much is the most well-known brand when it comes to apparels pretty much all over the world. Everybody knows this check mark when it comes to clothes is absolutely amazing. And seeing that their earnings are actually coming out tomorrow after close, I figured, you know what? Let's take a look at this company's fundamentals and see if maybe during this recent drop that we had in the markets within the past couple months, do we want to buy this company now in accordance to their fundamentals? So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Starting off guys with the dividend summary, Nike does pay out a dividend and a not too bad one at that. Current yield of 1.08, which ends up being 31 cents per share for an annual payout of $1.22. Now the payout ratio in regards to this dividend is actually not too bad either at 30.61%. I like to buy anything under 60. As you can see, 30 is significantly lower than that of 60. We're gonna take a look at this in regards to the cash flow in just a little bit, so stay tuned for that because cash flow is what companies use to pay out a dividend. Now the five-year growth rate is actually pretty good as well at 11.2%. And what's also really good is the fact that they have grown this dividend for 20 consecutive years. They are five years away from becoming a dividend aristocrat, which is really, really good to see. Ex-dividend date did pass as of June 3rd. Payout day is actually coming up this Friday, July 1st, and they pay their dividends quarterly. Coming now into the calculator, we got the ticker symbol of NKE market cap of $177.7 billion, PE of 29.84, with the current share price, guys, of $113, almost $113. This is pretty much just telling me that this might still be a little bit expensive in accordance to their earnings. However, guys, take a look at this year-to-date graph when it comes to Nike. On the year-to-date, they are down 31.43%. And on the one-year, guys, they are down 15.5%. So that's actually a pretty decent drop, as we can see right here for when it comes to Nike. In fact, their 52-week high is $179.10, and their 52-week low is $103. So we're more towards the 52-week low, which is actually fairly, fairly good. Now, obviously, earnings is just one metric. We're going to take a look at other metrics and see if we can come up with an intrinsic value for this company. Delving more into this dividend, as we saw, they do pay an annual dividend of $1.22, which actually ends up being almost $2 billion in the quarter to the amount of shares outstanding that they currently have. Now, when we compare this to the five-year average free cash flow, they're still left with around $1.8 billion left in their five-year average free cash flow. And the new metric that I decided to add was their current five-year free cash flow. Essentially, after this dividend is paid out, how much in free cash flow do they have within the past year? Basically, if you were to take last year's free cash flow and subtract the amount of dividends paid, how much money would they have left in their last year's free cash flow? As you can see right here, they're still left with guys $4 billion in their current free cash flow, which is again, really, really good. And if we actually take a look at some of the payout ratios to this, we can see that the current cash flow payout ratio, basically the cash flow from, from last year, they're at 32.25%. And on the five-year average free cash flow, they're at 51.1% which is really, really good because overall, they're still under my 60% mark when it comes to a payout ratio in regards to this dividend. Basically, what this is telling us is that this dividend is 100% safe and even able to be increased within the next couple years. Coming now to some fundamentals, guys. Starting, of course, with the net income. Five years ago of $4.24 billion to one year ago of $5.7 billion. This is an increase, guys, of 35%. And honestly, when it comes to this income, this is not something that I was necessarily expecting when it comes to Nike. Honestly, I was expecting a little bit better, right? I understand that two years ago, they did go down from the prior year of $4 billion to then $2.5 billion. It makes sense two years ago because again, COVID happened. But nonetheless, guys, what happened here four years ago that also caused a dip? They went from $4.24 billion to then around $2 billion. Now they did rebound three years ago to again, $4 billion. But then again, I have no idea what caused this. So when it comes to this, this is pretty much acting like a kangaroo right now. And it's not necessarily that consistent. However, what is really consistent is their free cash flow, which is the most important profit metric for any company because free cash flow is what companies use to essentially pay for everything in the company. 
They use this to pay out the dividend, pay down their debt, buy back shares, make acquisitions and overall grow the company, which I consider making acquisitions and growing the company pretty much the same thing. One is organic, the other one is not organic, but that's beside the point. When it comes to this free cash flow, guys, this is looking very, very good. Five years ago, up 2.7 billion to one year ago of almost $6 billion. That is an increase on the five year of 118% for the five year average free cash flow of $3.7 billion. Now, this is looking fairly consistent, guys, when it comes to five, four, and three years ago. However, two years ago, they did go down to 1.4 billion. This to me is a non issue because of again, COVID. This is a COVID number, which actually coming back up here to the net income, if that is the same case for the net income two years ago, then you can essentially just ignore it for all intents and purposes. Again, when it comes to the net income, the main issue is the four year ago number. But nonetheless, in regards to the free cash flow, beautiful. Ignore this two year ago number because it was COVID related. Essentially, you went from 2.74 to 4 billion to 4.78 billion to then $6 billion. A really, really nice steady increase. And if it wasn't for this COVID issue, this number would be at around the $5.5 billion mark. Take a look now at the last metric, we got the revenue. Five years ago of $34.35 billion to one year ago of $44.5 billion. That is an increase guys of almost 30% at 29 and two thirds of a percent. And honestly, really nice steady increase a little small dip here two years ago covid related no problem and then they shot back up one year ago so when it comes to this all their profit metrics guys looks really really solid except for their net income which the main anomaly here is four years ago if you guys know what caused this four years ago leave it down in the comment section below now let's take a look at some balance sheet numbers total assets minus the total liabilities we take a look at this guys to see if the company is able to cover their liabilities which includes their debts with just their assets so you essentially want this number to be obviously in the positive and of course increasing as well because if a company cannot cover their liabilities with their assets this could mean that when a recession hits they could really go under now when it comes to nike this is looking fairly fairly good currently they have this difference at 14.8 billion dollars and to the credit while they have been up within the past five years this has been kind of like a u-shape they were going down from five to two years ago, but then from two years ago to one year ago, they did go up and they did manage to go up even today. So that's actually really, really good. Average total assets around 29.5 billion. Average liabilities around 18.38 billion. And doing this difference, we get around $11.14 billion. And now let's come over here to the new graph, guys. And that is the cash flow minus the liabilities. Now, I did say what this was in my previous video of PayPal, but I'm going to say it again here for you guys who have not seen that video. Essentially, I'm always saying in every single video, and even this one, I just said it, companies use their cash flow to pay down their debts, not necessarily their income, not necessarily their revenue. It is their cash flow. That is what companies use. So when it comes to whether a company can pay off their debts, which is included in their liabilities, we want to take a look at the cash flow minus the liabilities to get a better representation. Because when it comes to the total assets minus the liabilities, in order for them to pay off their liabilities, they essentially have to liquidate some assets, which this should be a last thing that they should do. When it comes to cash flow, this is the one that they have on hand and money that they have left. Therefore, this is a better representation of whether or not a company is able to go bankrupt or not. So the way that we're looking at this right now is companies have liabilities. We're going to take the cash flow and we're going to subtract the liabilities. Now, as you can see here by this graph, they're all in the negatives. And this is fairly common among most companies because most companies have more liabilities than they do cash flow, right? It's very, very rare when they have zero debts. But the point of contention that I actually want to show here is what you guys essentially want to look for when it comes to this, it is whether or not this negative number is actually getting closer to zero. Because if it's getting closer to zero, this means that they are paying down their liabilities. They are paying off their debts. Now, when it comes to Nike from five years ago to three years ago, they were actually roughly remaining the same at around like the $9 billion mark. Now, two years ago when COVID hit, yeah, obviously they took on a lot of debt, which explains why their cash flow minus liability shot up all the way up to $22 billion. However, what is something that's really good to note is that currently they're down to $19 billion in liabilities, which means that they have bought back a couple billions of dollars using their cash flow, which is again, really, really good. Average total cash flow minus the average total liabilities, we get negative 13.54 billion dollars. 
And now looking at the shares outstanding, a metric that tells us whether or not the company is delivering you as the investor. You want this number to be going down. I can't stress this enough, guys. You really want this number to be coming down. Now, there's something fairly interesting that's happening here when it comes to Nike because, well, for all those of you who are seeing it, you probably already saw it, but I really do need to point it out. But regardless, five years ago, Nike had 1.6 billion shares to today, guys, of 1.5 billion shares. There is a decrease of 4.08% from the five-year mark and from the previous year to the current year. We are looking at one year ago to today. This is around 0.13% of shares that they have bought back. Now, the one thing I really do have to stress is the fact that they did buy back from five to four to three years ago, perfect. However, notice from three years ago, 1.568 billion shares, two years ago, 1.568 billion shares, and then probably because of COVID, they issued a little bit of shares going from 1.568 to 1.578. However, what is good is that the following year to today, they bought back a little bit of shares again at 1.576. So while it is good that on the five year, this is going down, understand that if they issue a little bit of shares here and there, if they keep it the same at around the 1.57 billion shares, essentially if two years pass and this remains the same, well, you would have a five year increase in shares, right? If they keep it around the 1.57 billion shares. So understand that this metric, unless they start buying back shares under the 1.568 within two years, this would essentially be an increase in shares. And lastly, looking at the cash equivalents, they currently have $8.7 billion with an average cash of around $6.6 .6 billion. Now it's time to make some assumptions, low, median, high using three different factors, revenue growth, projected share buyback, and the required rate of return. Guys, for the revenue growth, I'm going to keep it flat 10% to match the S&P 500. Now for the revenue growth and the projected share buyback, I'm going to do it with you guys live just so that way you guys can see how I actually do this. So starting, of course, with the revenue growth, I'm going to come up here to Seeking Alpha. And as you can see, we're looking at the revenue growth year over year and the revenue growth forward. You see that the revenue growth year over year is around 21.59% and the revenue growth forward is projected to be 11.44%. Taking this into account, guys, my job as an investor is to be conservative when it comes to these assumptions. Take into account pretty much everything that could possibly go wrong. We are now heading into really, really bad economic times. Do I think that Nike will go away because it will happen? No, but they will get hit. And that hit is something that I have to take into account. So for the revenue growth, I'm going to put in for the low assumption, 10%. For the median assumption, I'm going to put 13%. And for the high assumption, it is going to be 16%. Now for the projected share buyback, we just saw the shares outstanding graph over here. And we did see as well that they bought back around 4.1% of shares within the past five years. However, guys, notice what I said. If they don't buy back more shares within the next two years, they will essentially be showing a share issuing if they exceed the 1.568 billion shares. So I need to take that into account because I need to think that they'll keep it roughly the same. Let's say that within the next couple of years, they actually issue shares at negative 1%. For the media assumption, I'm going to say that they're actually going to start buying back shares, but at 2%. And for the high assumption, let's say that they'll do roughly around the same that they just did, which is around 4%. Now, with all of these assumptions, we actually get the target share prices for this company. So for the low assumption, this puts us at a price tag of $51.36. For the media assumption, it is $58.42. And for the highest assumption, it is $65.66. Now let us adjust for debt because a company is only as good minus the debt that they owe. So... We take a look at the cash equivalents, we take a look at the debt, and then we add those two numbers together. If they have more cash than debt, then this number comes up. And if they have more debt than cash, then this number comes down. And as you can see, it does come up by a significant amount. For the low assumption, now this is a price tag of $108.20. For the media assumption, it is $122.48. And for the high assumption, it is $137.07. Now let's add a margin of safety on top of this target share price after debt. And adding this margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15%, this puts me between a price tag of $91.97 all the way up to $102.79 for the low assumption. For the mini assumption, it is $104.11 to $116.36. And for the high assumption, it is $116.51 and 
22 cents. Guys, the current share price is $112.91. Now, looking at these numbers, well, for the target share prices, not adjusting for debt, this is pretty much just telling us that we would need to wait. However, guys, when it comes to the target share prices adjusting for debt, we are fairly close, if not pretty much in the money, right? Target share price adjusting for debt for the low assumption, it is $108, right? It really is not much of a difference when it comes to 108 to 113, right? You might be willing to pay a premium for a company like Nike, which isn't that bad of a company to pay a premium for, right? Especially that's not too much of a premium either. And if you take into account the media assumption, then this is an all out buy right now. And even that of the high assumption is even more of a buy now. And as well as if you actually take a look at the margins of safety, some of them still fall above or if not really, really close to that current target share price as well. So it really does give credence as to whether or not you may want to buy this company if you believe my assumptions. Notice why I said if you believe my assumptions, because none of this is financial advice and every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. I have this calculator, guys, available for free. Anybody could have it. I am going to update it with the new modifications I made. I haven't done that yet, but I will put out a community post once I do that. So to just be on the lookout for that community post. But nonetheless, this calculator, guys, is available for free. Anybody could have it. I also have a book value calculator as well for companies that don't have capital expenditures and a re-evaluation as well and a dividend tracking sheet. I'm giving you guys all of this. All I'm asking for is guys, help me grow my channel. Thank you so much for all the support that you've given me so far. 673 subscribers, that's absolutely insane. Thank you all so much. All I'm asking for guys is help me grow my channel. Two seconds of your time, go down there smash that like, hit that subscribe, hit that bell, and of course, share with people that may want to learn how to invest using a fundamental process. Now let's take a look at this company in regards to this dividend because actually a lot of people buy this company in regards to their dividend. And let's say that you make the average US income $68,703. Let's bring this to the monthly $5,725. Well, if you were to put in one month's income into this company at the current share price, which let's face it, in some cases, this calculator is telling me that it is a good buy right now. If you believe my assumptions, right? If not, you should make your own assumptions, as I said. But nonetheless, if you were to buy it at this current share price, this would actually buy you guys 50.71 shares. And in accordance to this $1.22 dividends per year, this nets you $61.86 annually in dividends, $15.47 quarterly in dividends, and $5.60 monthly in dividends. So when it comes to this, guys, this isn't really that big of a dividend yield. There are companies out there that gives in the $200 for the same amount. But then again, guys, when it comes to Nike, they do have a pretty good CAGR when it comes to this dividend, as well as a pretty good consistent dividend issuing years of 20 years, which is again, really, really solid. So you may want to invest for this company's dividend for the CAGR, or just the fact that it is fairly safe. So all in all, Nike's a company that honestly, I wanted to buy originally, but it's just one of those companies when it comes to apparel, it's just not really my cup of tea. I want something that has a little bit more of a moat, right? It's not that hard to make shoes. I understand that you're buying Nike for the brand, but then again, Under Armour exists, guys. Reebok exists. It's not that hard to make shoes. So when it comes to their moat, people will always tend to buy other ones if things really do hit the fan when it comes to prices. And instead of buying the $30 shoes, they might buy the $20 shoes. So that's essentially the way I look at Nike. Does that mean that it's bad? No, they do have a lot of good stuff going on for them. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying from a moat standpoint, that could possibly happen. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help here on YouTube. As I said, you guys can follow me on my new tech sites as well as the Let's Play channel. Links in the description below. So with that said, peace out and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis of video.